Welcome back guys to part four of the Plan to Reality series where we are taking this bathroom design from plan and putting it all together. Last time out in part three we leveled up this floor and laid the decoupling mat which is all looking pretty good now. Today we'll be setting out and laying the floor tiles and then grouting the walls and floor to finish. For those that haven't watched parts one, two and three, welcome. I've made this series to show you my methods of how I go about tiling and just to recap with this floor the goal was to finish the floor tiles as flush as possible with the shower tray and make sure the freestanding bath sits level right let's get into it these are the tiles 20 by 20 centimeters they're going to be laid in a basket weave pattern so alternate basically straight off from looking around the room my first thought is to have a full tile off both sides of the shower tray if it works to keep as much of the pattern on show as possible and this is a main point of the room and probably the best thing to come square off of so the easiest way with this one as the tiles are small is to just lay some down and have a look first thing i want to check is how it works out to the door as that is also nice to have a full tile from the door. Also I'll be checking how square the door is with the shower tray as this is another visual point as you walk into the room. So working back with some two millimeter spaces in the joints it actually worked out pretty good as this bathroom is going to have a wooden threshold I've got lucky there that the tiles finished pretty much in the right place. So next I'll check to see how square it is to the door stops by just measuring back from my level placed on the tile. It's about four millimeters difference and I'm fine with that. It's intolerance. So now I'll just do a check to the back of the room to see how it works out on the bath waist and cubby hole. And that's all fine. So while the tiles are here, I'll put a couple of rows down to what I think I can reach when spreading adhesive and draw one of my start lines. By marking the tiles I laid out, then I can use my level to draw a line. Next is to check the room going across, coming off the side of the shower tray. This gives me a bit of a silly cut, but I'm thinking there is a towel rail here. Some of it is behind the door and some of it is behind the bath. So as long as it's square, I'm going to go with it for the fact that it would be nice to come off of the shower tray and show as much of the pattern as possible. I'll just take a measurement from a few tiles and check to the other side. And that works out fine. So now I can draw the line going up the room to make my starting point. And this is where I'll be starting, hitting these two lines. I'm going to work back from the tray to the back of the room and then swing round to the left and back out the door. So the setting out's all done, now on to the mixing. As per usual, just make sure you read the instructions for mixing up on the back of your bag. They always have the quantities and ratios on the back there. These caracol buckets and the bowel buckets, I believe, have the litres marked on the side so you know how much water to add. And today I'll be using a bowel rapid flexible adhesive. And a good medium consistency like that is perfect. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter notch trowel for these. I have my pile of tiles set out, ready to go. I've got my tape measure there, a scraper and a pen, along with spaces and a sponge. These things are good to have beside you when you're tiling. I'll just get a good amount of adhesive on the floor, enough that I think to spread the patch. And then I shall use my notch trowel using the flat side or rub it into the decoupling matting. This is quite important to make sure you fill the voids. Then I'll go over it with the notch side, trying to keep the lines as straight as possible, as this is better to bond the tiles and collapse the adhesive and I'll spread that section and I'll start tiling. Okay, starting at the two lines I drew earlier, I'll start placing the tiles down, giving them a push and a wiggle, working my way back to the tray, as this is what I'm coming square off of. I won't back edge these as they are small. You can if you want to really cover yourself. I would with a larger or bigger tile, but to me there is no need for a tile like this from my experience. cutting I mark the tile with two marks as the wall isn't perfectly square making sure I've got the pattern the right way around. It always looks a bit confusing how we mark tiles like this on the reverse but if you kind of imagine it that you mark it and then you'd flip the tile around it makes sense and then I can just easily score and snap them on my signal cutter like this. Okay. 
Once I've got a few down with some spaces, I can use my level as a straight edge on the tiles from the tray to make sure I'm all good. And then same thing with the side, I'll just dry lay a tile down and check it with the level to make sure that's all good that way as well. Your first row is always your most important, so it's good to spend a bit of time making sure that you're happy with it, because after that you're literally just coming off of it. So make sure that's right and good first, and that'll set you up for the rest of your tiling for the room. Here I'm just using my tape to mark a few tiles, then I can use that mark on the floor for my next couple of rows two marks level line and then i'm good to spread again and like i say guys because we spent the time to make sure our first row was exactly where we needed it all this from here is just filling in until we get to some cuts Right, now for this back part, as I've got a few pipes and cuts, I'm going to dry cut them all first, then I can just spread and work my way out. So dry lay some tiles, I'll cut the tile to size first, then I'll mark either side of the pipe length and width ways. I always allow some play and I'll be using a 30mm hole cutter so the pipe isn't too tight. So using my square, I'll then mark a box on the tile. You can use your tape measure and a level or just something straight to do this, but a square is quite easy. Then once you've marked your box, this is the 30 millimeter diamond core bit I'll be using. It goes on the angle grinder. I just draw around it in my box and that gives me a nice guide to cut to. And there we go. That's that one done. Then I'll mark the next pipe using the exact same process. This is an L cut going into the cubby hole, so I just mark the notch out, then this bit I'll score, and then I'll angle grind the short bit, and I can use my pinchers to sort of snap it off. The bath pipe, even though it's between two tiles, is the same method as the radiator pipes. The only difference here is I'll be using a 50mm core bit to drill it out between the two tiles, as you can see here. So I cut all the holes out and now I just check to make sure they're good. I've got videos on hole cutting guys which you're welcome to check out. Once I know they're all good then I'll spread this row and I can work backwards and start getting out of this room. That's all good, it's worth doing some dry cuts just to get fiddly bits out of the way then you can just concentrate on spreading and laying. The angle cuts I mark exactly the same as all the other straight cuts. And hopefully now you're picking up the method of how to mark the tile. Okay, what do you think of that so far guys? They definitely stand out, don't they? I like them. Let me know what you guys think. Right, so now I just need to fill in behind the door first and then I can work my way back out of the room. I hope that all makes sense to you guys, especially with how I mark tiles for the cuts. I tried to show it the best I could, but really it's something you just get the hang of after a while. For architrave cuts like this, it's best to mark the L shape out first, then start marking the individual parts to form your shape. You can also just use a vibrating saw to remove them, then you'll just have an L shape to cut basically. But if you fancy a challenge, then do it like this. Okay, and this is my theory on these marks. A little bit of it is freestyling, but as long as you get yourself roughly there, you can always mark it smaller, and it's better to take some off rather than the other way around. And that one actually goes straight in, so happy days. You'll see me put arrows on these quite a lot. It's because even for me, it gets quite confusing with these to which way round to have the pattern. Uh, this architrave cut is just exactly the same way as the uh, previous one.
There we go. That's all done. Things I'd suggest to take away from this floor, guys. Look around the room for setting out the tiles and identify key areas for the visual look. Take your time and make sure your first row is right as that determines the rest of your floor. It's a good idea to take some time dry cutting. Then you can just concentrate on spreading and laying tiles. I spent the time to level up this floor first. This made the whole tiling process a hundred times easier. You can watch my previous video on that for the methods. So that's all the tiling done in this series. I hope you've liked it and picked up some useful tips. Now let's just finish up with some grouting. Okay, tools I use. I have my trowel. A knife is handy if you need to remove adhesive from joints. Wedges for finishing the edges. They are very useful. My paddle which goes onto my cordless steel drill. Marshall grout float. These things are the best in the game. You'll never go back once you use one. A bucket of water with a sponge. A mixing bucket and of course my grout. I like to use Keracol grout when I'm using porcelain tiles. I just find it has a really nice joint. It doesn't sink too much in it. If I was using ceramic tiles, I'd normally use a bowel grout. It just doesn't go off as quick, but easier on ceramic tiles. But as per usual, just read your bag's instructions for knocking up the right ratios. A not too wet, not too dry consistency like that is perfect. We're going to start by grouting the shower cubicle and then work our way around the room. So let's get into it. Right, I load my grout float up with a reasonable amount of grout. Then with the side or nose of the float, start working it into the joint. Swipe back across it, holding it at an angle. You'll know you've got the right angle when you start scraping off the grout. Try and move as much of the grout as possible. It doesn't matter too much how messy it looks putting it on. Don't intentionally be messy. I like to get as much grout off as I can within reason, but with grouting, it's all about the washing off. That's the key to get that perfect joint. Bad grouting can wreck a job visually and can catastrophically if it leaks so don't spend a lot of time doing some really nice tiling without paying attention to the grouting process. Once I've put a bit on I like to check the joint to see if it's starting to dry. Even though the grout starts to go off on the face of the tile it doesn't mean it has on the joint. These days after you activate the face with some water it wipes off pretty easy. What you don't want to do is wash the joint out too soon. So when it starts to go firm in the joint, that is the right time for washing off. Every tile is different, mainly natural stone tiles and ceramic tiles. The grout will go off quite instantly as those types of tiles have a lot of suction in them. But with porcelain tiles like these, I can grout the whole shower cubicle before I'd need to wash off. You can see here I've grouted the whole wall and the grout joint is still not dry yet. So that means I can carry on and keep grouting the other walls until it starts to dry. And you can see if I just wet my finger, I can rub it off the surface. So I've got no worries with that. So I've gone ahead and put the whole shower's worth of grout on. And you can start to see here now I'm checking the joint and it's started to dry. So I'm ready for washing off. I'll do two washes, the first one being a dirty wash. This is to activate the grout on the surface and start removing it. Then a second wash, which is called a clean wash. For both of these washes, make sure your sponge is fully ringed out as you don't want to soak the joint with too much water. The dirty wash will be a bit more of an aggressive wash with my sponge. And for the clean wash, I'll keep it tight to the wall, running through an angle. For both washes, when one side of the sponge fills up with grout, flip it to the clean side. After you've done your dirty wash and got the residue off, allow at least 10 minutes before coming back with your clean wash again to not soak the joint in water your clean wash is where you really shape the joint and get a nice finish like you can see here so like i say i could put the whole section on before starting the wash off as they were porcelain tiles then by that time where i started was ready to wash off note that when grout is on something like plaster it'll go off quite quick because of the suction and i'll show you with the wedges how i use them to get a neat finish with that so as you can see i just scrape along it holding the wedge flat to the trim then go over with a tight sponge to achieve a flush finish. And you can use this exact same method in corners like this just to really neaten things up. And those are my techniques for getting a good grout finish. Note that all internal corners should be siliconed as part of the waterproofing barrier as well. Now that's all done, the next day it can have another wipe or a buff with a cloth to get the remainder of the grout residue off. The floor here is done in the exact same method as the wall. Again, as they are porcelain, I can grout the whole floor before having to think about washing off. If you are grouting a big floor, you can use a wash bucket or a wash boy as they are called here. But to me, they're a bit of a gimmick. I've had two throughout my career and they've both ended up in the skip. In my opinion, they wet the joint too much and it's quicker and better to achieve a nice joint from a hand sponge. It's very important to go back over your work and look for pinholes in the grout, especially in the wet areas like the shower and around the bath. In my case, as I have a lot of joints, even more so. So take time to check your work and if you find any holes, just reapply some grout. 
And that is this one all done, from the plan to reality. Thanks for watching the series, guys. I hope this helps you with your design ideas and the methods used to help you with your projects. Let us know what you think in the comments, and of course, any questions, just ask. There will be a new series on large format porcelain tiles coming soon with another spectacular design, so stay tuned for that. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.